Right, this is a ladder match, and it's going down between two very highly rated players. We have White Horse up the top, and we have Adjux down below. Adjux is in the blue corner, he is Seraphim, facing off against the White Horse of a Cybran in the red corner. Um, I think I need to watch it again. Uh, Yogi Bear was your tag, I'm guessing, judging from the sevens afterwards and the sevens after your name. Yeah, I think I need to watch that one again. Sorry, mate. Yeah, so no apologies on that. I'll need to redo it. But uh, so Aksum Ar Cats Valley. It's actually a pretty nice map. Uh, standard openings for these guys. We have Factory into Four Mechs and Hydro. Uh, quick little hunter out from a White Horse going for a wee bit of harassment. Maybe we can find something out from there. Check out the reclaim. Buckle again. Just like the previous map, there's a bunch of manual reclaim down here that can be grabbed. These are tree clumps, of course, to give a bit of extra mass. And uh, that to pop up with their tree eco. Started out, there are a couple of bigger bits down here. We've got a seraphim factory surrounded by some wreckage there. Got a small clump of rocks over there, but overall, it's not a lot of reclaim to fight over. So. Really decent. Up the front we have a couple of ponds, the commanders can dip into these slightly deeper spots and they might be okay from ground fire. I think it's just deep enough, perhaps. Can't guarantee it. Certainly won't be deep enough from T3 strats. Okay, but here comes the lab. Okay. It's good you know. Living his best life. Yeah. Looking for an engineer to kill. And he might get lucky. One wanders on over and he scoots around the back because... Defensive units are going out to the left to help this guy. Alright, so we had two lands. So we had a factory, four mixes, hydro, a few pigeons, second land factory into an air factory. And exact same build over here. Land factory, four mixes, pigeon, second land. Actually, so I take back these four, five pigeons into air factory. So a couple of extra pigeons there uh, compared to the four for adjux, but it's pretty similar opening builds. And uh, these guys know what they're doing. A very highly rated. And does this guy get himself an NG kill? The answer is a solid maybe. Needs one more volley to kill that off. Microing his butt, and there we go, just. So first blood to that brave little lab, kills off an engineer, dies to the Tham once, but man, that was close. For his last volley, he died. Okay, now we have moles out in various locations looking for incursions. Got one heading down this way, maybe it's going to cloak itself up. Hidden. It's getting some advanced intel, they can sit up front. It gives them a bit of coverage, so I can see units coming there or there. Uh, spot things trying to get through this little gap. This guy's going to have a bad time though, because that is a commander and any second now he's going to get shot at. Nope, oh, stays out of range. Just. Nope. Oh, commander missed. What? I see that very often. That's right, he finished that and it will die because it's still in the gun range. Boom. There you go. Finishes that off with a plum. Engineer down here has finished the mix and the radar, just getting some extra intel on that front. Have a mentor scuttling past these guys, however. He's actually going to reach this, kill off the radar and the engineer as well. No way it's going to survive that onslaught. And then maybe kill off the mix, depending on reactions from Adrox. And unfortunately, the reactions are probably not going to keep that alive. Maybe. No, not anymore. Ah, uh, but it will because the Mantis started shooting at the unit instead of the Mass Extractor. 
So between the Tham and the Selene, that's going to keep that through much life. Okie dokie. Speaking of runbys, we've had a larger one here from Whitehorse, so good effort there, and this should be the death of this mass extractor. It was an engineer that died, did not have a very good day, and single Tham rolls back to help out, but he runs into two mantis, which is never good for your health to be outnumbered. Well, these guys could do better with moving up here and knocking out that mass extractor, but we have a counter raid going on from Adrox, going to run into units from the White Horse, unfortunately. Again, two versus one, and great. This gives a massive advantage to the Mantis from White Horse, and Sam is done for. Another Sam was coming to join them, solo guy just rolling along, living his best life, and his best life is going to be pretty short lived. Once he runs into all of this. Let's have a look at factories. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 planned here for White Horse. Any tech along the way will not as of yet. It's all T1. As T1 air factories popping out units more just for the sake of having T1, I think. And Adrox has pushed up from this comp as has White Horse. Just throwing down a point defense in the middle. Just an extra bit of defense there. Factory right beside the rig. Grab that anytime he wants. Checking out the back. And all T1 at the moment. One And looking at this, we'll raid up on the top right, so Adrox moving up this way. Uh, if only he could kill that off, but he's not going to get to thanks to the defending units from Whitehorse. He could, could turn around and kill them. He had more. Uh, but now, Fresh Mantis coming into the fray will assist in keeping things going here. Almost finished off that mass extractor. Could have had the units to do it. Could have, but I didn't. Right, another Mantis raid. So White Horse is actually in pretty good work with his raiding. He's keeping pressure on all areas of the map, and it's forcing Adrox to respond instead of being instead of being active. He's being reactive, and it's hampering his expansions as well. You see, he's got mixes at the back that haven't been built. He's got, you know. Looking at the map control, I actually haven't said that, it kind of looks like it's a bit more 50-50 now. He's a bit even across the middle, the exact midsection is controlled by Whitehorse, but of course he's uh, over here from Adrox grabbing up the Reclaim because Reclaim is gobbly good. Get your Reclaim, get your mass, uh, get yourself shot by Mantis, he won't care. And White Horse moving way up from this comm. He should be okay as long as he doesn't get swarmed. And. Well, no, there's not knife units to swarm him. He'll be alright. Looks like he's probably just heading up this way. Gonna kill off the mix, NG, and radar. And then most likely keep walking around back into the water. That's exactly what he's doing. It's just a walk by. It is literally a walk by. Waypoints for moving. Right, raiding down on the left from Whitehorse, cutting off a bunch of units and ready to move on up. Has an engineer which is planning to mix in factory. Over on the right hand side we did have a raid from Adrox that killed off a few things but they've fallen back a wee bit. And it's now a band moving between these and skipping the main force as well unfortunately for Adrox but happily for Whitehorse. These guys need to consolidate themselves into a single blob and that will keep them alive much, much longer. However, the Mantis don't stop. They're not stopping to fight. They are moving on to raid and they want to find this guy. Which is exactly what they're going to do. So, more problems there for Adrox. As the Mantis do get on past and cause issues. There is a bigger force down here though, so these ones will be safe. But that's not... Tense, right. Checking out, do we have any kind of tech yet? Not that can be seen. This is all still T1. Uh, we do have a T2 mass extractor, which is possibly why Adrox is ahead on Eco. Uh, not seeing a T2 mix, there's one started. And, uh, yep. There's no tech here either for White Horse. It's upgrading. Oh, I take that. Back, my apologies, right there, T2, T2 factory, and already an engineer off the line, so he's going to be looking to build some T2 power from that dude, I would imagine. 
we have a oh, there is t2 shift there going on for Ajok. so similar timings but white horse is definitely ahead with his and now he's pushed down this way with a large force of mantis commanders and residents as well just helping boost out all force and take out all of this basically there's a small counter push up here from Adrox coming back but there's a bomber over here stopping down some extra damage oh kills off the engine just before their factory can finish that's a well timed run in yeah so close to being completed doesn't manage it though all right now they're going to walk on past and look at killing off the mixes because you know no engineers no rebuild takes a bit of time on the right hand side good little fight going on i think this can oh, will go the way of agile so he has a lot more units on the ground back and reinforce from these guys coming here but now we have rhinos this one have any others or is that the first one off the line uncertain but there goes the t2p gen on its way up and that's going to be very handy for white horse indeed we have yep engineers doing the same thing for adrox t2 power generator on the way and the assistance to make that work ushivers rolling off the line because that's what you do yeah make ushivers all right left hand side and this is a necessity adrox has had to bring his calm over to try and help stem this white horses in the area as well of course but uh should be okay it's like a feeling even fight if these two guys decided to get into it but uh Edrox without a gun upgrade is just simply being a damage tank the more units he can kill off with his comm and the more damage he can regenerate the better off he'll be with the use of the comm and the backup guys now uh, on the other side we see a large force from Adrox wandering on in these are all Thams, a couple of Zooies in the back end of the mix there is some anti-air for the bombs that have decided to arrive overhead but I think the anti-air is dead and these guys just really have to do as much damage as possible before they all die because they've got nothing to stop the bombers having their way which looking at the numbers I should be able to knock out this little expansion kill off the radar get rid of the mixes and be job done can maybe send a band up this way actually already has a separate band on the way and in come the interceptors from Adrox is it a fight he wants to have though well apparently the answer is yes now it's an air battle and who has the most air is the question who can micro it better well the answer is Mm, very even actually quite even looking but I think we're going to see Whitehorse run out yes indeed there we go it was looking pretty even but Whitehorse has come the victor of that and now we see the Rhino is in position up front helping keep that alive we see units moving down on the left of Whitehorse along with the commander there's Com in the local region as well Got a band of forces here, defensive, and uh, not defensive against that because they're in the wrong position. But again, they're just looking very 50 50. It has wheeled slightly in a, an anti clockwise direction as to where the units are and what they're dealing with, but uh, still quite 50 50. Have control. Having a look at the eco though, can you just sit? Stop swapping. And Adrox is actually ahead, I would say marginally. Till we look at, yep, no, he's ahead everywhere. So more reclaim, uh, more eco, so more income, and more total mass overall. White Horse is winning on power and on kill death ratio. Right now that's the thing, and that's a renegade. So T2 air for White Horse and renegades are not a bad choice. They can do some good damage. They can do area of effect very hard to dodge to those units away do we have a t2 air shift no nope, just t1 for the moment from edrox and fair enough all right shield gen going up want to keep those power generators alive absolutely need them to do that in fact we're still on the way if we had any others join it at least we have these are all t2 support factories and they're popping out of 
Good on him. Right, checking up this way, and more renegades coming out. T2 land is well established for white horse as well. Does he have more power? I see the one. That's all I. What's he basing his power off? Doesn't matter. He's okay. Okay, stalemate down the bottom. Our units did push up from White Horse, but they're like, mm, eh, mm, nah, we stay away from that. That's not a great idea. And up this way, we see Renegades having their way with this expansion. Uh, taken out Eco Lift. Mass Extractors love dying, but there's a flak coming on, and that should shoot these guys away before they get too damaged, and indeed they do. On the Merry Tot, away from the flak, and that's actually a massive air win for Adjox. He now controls the skies with interceptors, leaving these renegades to be brutally exposed, although flying over flak is a good idea. Oh dear, just have a look at the interceptors melt from the flak. Yeah, he's going to do it again. He's going to drag them over the flak, and nope. Adjox saw what happened last time, and oh, maybe not though. Circling around and not a lot of interceptors left after flying over that flag. He must have had about 15 or so. 7 kills to that guy, plenty of damage. And interceptors from Whitehorse joining the fun to make things most irritating. Unfortunately no flak in this mess of Adrox, just a bunch of ground units and they'll be quite slowly but surely whittled down to nothing. Gunships of White Horse. I'm gonna pop out some more interceptors, but not a lot left, and I keep hearing T1 Bomber. Ah, that's why. I'm killing an engineer. Poor guy. What he wanted to do. Renegade is heading out the back, and there was an interceptor trying to intercept, but unfortunately gets caught out by the air wing from White Horse, and now this section is under threat. That was a couple of T1 mixes and a T2. So Adric might have the ego. Doesn't have the defenses to keep it. As evidenced by everything that's going on. Uh, Hydro is going to live. Panel's not the priority. Masses. We're going to see another T2 mass extractor go down. There's just nothing to stop these guys right now. Uh, don't want to fly away too early. That's still alive. It's still alive. Thank you. Now they'll move on to the next step, which will be this one, I'd imagine. You might as well get as much done as possible with them. While you have the advantage. This has done wonders for Ajox Zico, if you're White Horse. Because that's a lot of change. He was ahead. He was ahead in generated Eco, he was up around, what, maybe 70, 80? Now he's down to like 50. So those re the renegades, ravages, those renegades have got a good amount of work done and they just keep on killing, although they're now caught out without their fighter escort a little bit too far away and uh, they are going to be collected finally by these interceptors. Flak is moving out as well, so that's going to do additional damage to the interceptors from, oh can they finish it though? So the line of air and these guys are actually all very damaged. They get caught behind though and the air wing from a white horse not quite up to the same game plan. The gunships do make it away. Big fight going on here and that is not going to come well for white horse though because there are Ushavas and the commander in this mix so the army is going to get absolutely wiped off the face of the map literally as they try to run away. Similar over this side, we see a very commanding army holding this area. They've had a fight. There's engineers around scooping up the wrecks. Scooping up the extra mass. Alright, renegades could uh, take off the ground. They could uh, kill this engineer right here who's busy making a radar. Want that? We have a gun upgrade on the way for Whitehorse. So, wanting to bring his comm into the fray. Maybe tip the balance in his favour on the front line. Do a wee bit of extra work there. 
Alright, Renegades bring Renegades on the bottom left. They have indeed taken off and they are killing off Eco. Kill DNG. Easy target. Might as well. And the way they call the radar. Cool, job done. On your top, boys. Done good. Right, that is a transport full of engines, so White Horse wanted to send those somewhere and pick up some mass, I would imagine. Uh, what happened to the nah, this army? Push forward, did it die? Did it sneak past down here and kill stuff off? Or did it fall back? Maybe it fell back. Unexpected. Okay. Now then, this force from white is not... Well, as long as they dodge, they might be okay. But sitting still, or going in a straight line while this team went out involved, never good for you off. And just look at all the shells come falling on down. It's like a freaking waterfall. Get themselves turned into dust. Superior force... Ah, that's a new button. Can't say I've hit that one before. Do that apparently. But there we go. That is this just absolutely wiped off the face. Now the downside to Zoe's and T195 is the amount of wrecks and reclaim they demolish. So you have a unit sitting still, the RTs fire at it, you know, launching over into the air. And the unit turns into a wreck, but then more artillery shells land and they actually damage the wrecks. Like you saw what happened with that factory. There was a factory wreck there, but T1 Artie shells came on over and they, well, basically just blew up the wreck. No reclaim for you. Alright, single Mantis, and he is brave. And trying to get the job done. The question is, will he? The answer is no, because Zooey's. And see there, 40. Nothing. So a T1 Adi, great at killing everything, including Reclaim. You don't want that to happen. Right, White Horse finishes upgrades and actually has stealth as well in their commander. So, not sitting around him. So, able to move on up, start shooting things before they can see him. Back here, Adrox has T2 in his gum, and looks like he's building up. Maybe wants to consider finishing that point defense. He might need it. It's a gun comm. Right. Just to be quiet. Though not for very long, there are a couple of forces up here looking like they're going to have a go at each other. A whole bunch of engineers on the front line, and they're going to be dead. There was the scout. The scout goes boom. Engineers just getting slaughtered. That's kind of what happens to engineers, so you move up on the front line, you use it to grab Reclaim, they die. If they get Reclaim, they have paid for themselves, and that's hilarious. Single engineer down here popping up a radar. Uh, it's too amusing. And there goes the gun comm from White Horse. Throw some overcharges, and you're going to kill oh, three at once just there. Nasty little guy. Radar thrown down, which does nothing because, of course, it's a stealth com. Can't see stealth com on radar. He's happy living his gunfight life. Alright, Rhino sitting still, getting pumped by T1 artillery shells. The health goes away, the reclaim goes away. Double jeopardy. Do not want, so they will fall back. In the middle, it is Rhino who's chasing down Ushavas. Guys are in a retreat. They don't want any of what they're about. Okay, and over this side we see, yeah, T2PD, more T2PD was built. As well as some nice T1 anti-air actually. So a bunch of T1 AA and some T2 point defense. As well as some reinforcing units means this spot should be safe, but you know, fuck the ground. Nobody likes the ground. See that white horse has already dropped his combat. He doesn't want to loiter around. 
He knew this reinforcement was coming and decided no. Okay, this engineer has actually been capturing. It's a cyber NG, but that is a Sarah from Mass Extractor, so he's been going around capturing things. There's an engineer here which has been murdered by a Medusa. Well, it's just as Medusa do Medusa. But this large force looking to have a battle in the middle, but in the meantime, there's a bigger force sweeping around the back from Whitehorse again. The number of times he's used this approach and managed to sneak on by, and of course, this has caused this army to fall back, which is exactly is wanting there still t2 on the ground there i uh, t2 air has been made and that's the fall throughs coming out they may be deployed over to the right to take care of that and let's see still just t2 air and t2 ground for white horse so both these guys sticking with the t2 stage for the moment that's still going on all right deceiver being all deceivy yeah assist still and dies Nothing too deceitful about that. Right, Vulthu is out, and the first thing it's going to do is kill a heavily damaged Rhino, and then it's going to die to flak. But it has given a wee bit of time, and now these defending forces here from Adrox are over. They're going to maybe keep some things alive, but loses a the T2 mix there. Now the T2 mix in Jupiter here. As long as he can keep these guys out of range of all of this. Go. There are a couple of T1 producers in the mix, but I really want to focus down the mass extractor because he's not going to get much else done. T1 shells a little bit on over, not getting it, the job done, and now this group is getting pushed by a. I would have said superior numbers, yeah. Particularly being Elshivers, this is definitely the stronger force. That's what she wrote there. And here, Inceptors catch. all dead anyway. That is a win for White Horse at the moment. Battle in the middle looks like there's more red than blue. May escalate there, but a huge air fight. And to me it looks like the red is dwindling and indeed as they try to run away they get caught. Nothers. No of course it is sorry. I wonder what they were going for. Was an attempt to course here snipe? Were they just going to go look for targets of opportunity? Were they perhaps going to go for the power? Going to go for the T... Well, there, I was going to say T2, but it's actually now T3. T3 HQ is up. And that is Othams coming off the line. Is Whitehorse aware of that? Well, he will be. Because he scouted that when it's T2, and now of course it's dull, which means it is no longer there. And, uh, yeah. Well, it means it's... With the ring around it, it means it's there, but it's no longer T2, which means he knows T3 is on the cards. And back here, we see Adrox did chase all the way to White Horse's base. I think he really wanted to try and kill off the Corsairs, but a poor decision with his running away because the Corsairs are now tailing his Indies. Of course, there's only a few Corsairs, and those Interceptors could turn at any moment, wipe them. There was a full through up there, gets mutilated by an air wing. More fighting going on up here, but you see it is White Horse trying to keep these units at bay and kill them off. They have done a successful raid though. Killed off the next factory. He'd be the other mass extractor. Oh, the commander's having fun, and yeah, that's gone down. Commander though, he'll be fine. Got himself some extra kills and cleaned. A few engineers back here, so they'll be able to rebuild pretty quickly. Here we go, slap down factory, slap out more, grab some reclaim, grab some mixes, get more income, and they're still on the bottom left having fun. This engineer right here has kept, continued to capture this like radar beside radar, and that's hilarious. It's, it's like an, a bit of a energy exchange going on down there. Okay, has there been a T3 shift? Not yet. This kind of surprises me. Um, I do wonder if Whitehorse hasn't seen the factory. And look at this air factories going up. Everything's going to be all mother loader T1 SBAM coming out of there. So many interceptors. Alright. I'd accept this. 
siege tanks. Not going to be a good time for Whitehorse. And is isn't scattered for a while. Ah. Finally, this all goes down. A bunch of zoos come along, they pummel. Raid out into oblivion. Another one being tried to pop up here by White Horse. You know, free intel, but um Hendrix knows us all there. You can see that. You can see that. In a moment when the radar finishes, we'll be able to see that. Bink. There we go. And we'll probably see these guys just go for a wander in this direction. And clean it up. Right, air wing sitting on the ground at the front. Um poor decision. Oh. Large number of T2 and T1 units in that mix can be to a T3. I would maybe put my money on these guys, especially if the Otham sit still and take a bunch of Zooey fire to the face. That would be absolutely irritating. Uh, shields are blinking off wire because he does not have the power to run things. So another T2 PG going up. We had, there we go, the shift to T3 has started for White Horse. It's going pretty quickly. Won't be too long before we see bricks on the field. And that's for all involved, right? Plenty of power and another T. Some shields going up over them. Don't want to lose your power. So you see, these guys are much more concerned with shielding their power than the other mass extractors, because you can always rebuild your mixes if you're quick enough. Um, you, know, you can even grab the reclaim to rebuild other ones faster, but you lose your power. Can't reclaim your pigeons and get power out of them. You can only reclaim them and get mass. So that's why they're sitting there. Another. No. Nope. No dice for that guy. You want PD? And goes pop. He's alive. I find that utterly hilarious. I mean, Adrox has to know he's near, right? At one glance at the radar. Power stalling. And he. See that? Seen a few units down there. Whoopsie. Let's click there. And T3 NGs are out and they are building T3 power because he definitely needs it. I hear the siege tanks. Alright, they need to try and keep it range. Uh, if they can manage to do that, they should do it alright. They can attack multiple units in there. Oh. The main turrets on top, they got the little side guns at the edges as well. So if they can kite on this lot, they'll be okay. Air wing is in. What's it attacking? I don't know. It hurt some bombers, but I don't think they got anything done in the end. Uh, they're having a fight. Kind of think this is going to go the way of Whitehorse. His inties are much more clumped together, and I believe he has far, far more than what Adrox does. And indeed, have a look at the total numbers. I'm pretty sure it's going around about twice as much. See, a hundred. It's 30. Okay, so three times as much. Absolutely smashed them. And this leaves the Corsairs to do their job. They're going to wander on in and they're going to just start dealing damage out because they can. Three damage. That's actually a lot of Corsairs. I do wonder if they might be better spent finding a different target. What can Whitehorse see? Well, he hasn't scouted for a while, he could look at killing off some T2 power. So if Fleck is coming on out and that's going to dissuade him from using those Corsairs for much more than uh, masculine. Oh, that's a poor, poor location for them to fly the only air units that Adrox even has left and they just happened to fly straight over them. Took a few out there. Now there's not a huge amount left but they're going to get more work done. Yeah, just kill off some more mass extractors, why don't you? Not looking happy for Adjox. He is down. Behind an eco, behind an income, behind in reclaim. Adjox is just behind with everything right now. He is working on that T3 region. If we see that complete, will we see more work happen? does have one, two, three, so T3 HQ plus three support factories. Looking out up here, we have one HQ, one, two, and three support factories going up there as well, and T3 power, so Whitehorse in a similar boat. 
Stick him with the T2 air. And this guy's still alive. Because hey, why not? Alright, force units up here. Um, sitting still. Not living the best life by doing that. They are dying horrible deaths. Alright, T3 power is done for Adjux. And the question is, what now? Well, apparently the question is, the answer is more siege tanks. What if the question is? That's the answer. Okay, needs to reboot up here, and we already have an engineer working on it. Cause heck. Right, more powerful white horse. Is he. Nope, still sticking with the T2. Not doing a T3 air shift yet. Thinks that may be a little bit overkill. And yes and no, if he can get T3 air, get it working, but my word, that's a lot of. a lot of course, yes. 10 11. 11-ish Corsairs, decent to do a reasonable amount of damage, and feels a commander caught out of spot. He's over here on an upgrade, he does have plenty of flak around him though. Those Corsairs will get approximately one pass, if they can't kill him then that's game over. But he is under shield so I don't think they would succeed if they tried. Alright, T1 bombers dropping their load, uh, probably killing nothing. I think maybe they were going for the flak, or at least being distracting. In come the Corsairs, but there's so much flak down here. They are just simply overwhelmed by the airbursts in the sky. It's a whole lot of Corsairs is gone for not very much in the way of profit. Air is doing its job though. It is helping thin out these units, helping keep the T3 under control because now he has finished these and he can finally settle on some decent brick production which will help even up the ground forces but right now this is what he needed to do just to keep this force under control. I think he's thrown away air. Yep, Edrix is throwing away air to try and keep these guys alive which means more bombers can come in and if they can focus down the flank it's going to be not what they can do, and that's a terrible place to land your interceptors. There we go, he noticed. Good, good. More flak coming on out. That's a lot of flak, actually. How much has he got in the field? Eight. Eight mobile flak. Why not? Yeah, the amount of course is that White Horse has made, I think a shift to T3 would have been the better plan what he's going to do after finishing this very very slow building pigeon single t3 engineer build now it's going to take him a while whether or not he has the eco for it or he doesn't normally it would take nearly four minutes to build but when you're still in mass by that much it's going to take you a bit longer as another t3 factory so there's one two three four five t3 factories for white horse and he is building bricks for all he's worth out of there yeah, what well, we've got going on the flip situation. Or still Bart's. That is a T3 air upgrade. So Adrox. That's why he's got no interceptors because he has been making a shift to T3. And if he gets a bunch of ASFs out, it is going to be havoc. Uh, interceptors still deciding on bad places to loiter. Really don't want to do that. One bombers everywhere. Look at this. What is their target? I don't know what their target might be. But they don't want to come in one big clump because they will die to the multiple. And I mean multiple. Black. But kind of looks like they are. They could almost switch over this way actually and come kill a bunch of this stuff. T3 air is done. Uh, if a white horse can't get a handle on the air problem, may find himself falling behind. He's got the ground sorted. He's got T3 units down here. They're doing as they do. He's got plenty of T1 RT helping to kill stuff out as well. It's a sizable force to worry about. Got plenty of air. He's got uh, dual more courses. Go T3, my friend. I think you need it. T3 
majority of ground forces, so he's well in command right now. Is that true? 256 income to 156. So White Horse actually has so much more eco right now. Adrox is firmly camped in this little wee corner of the world, and this is pretty much all he's got. A lot of T3, and if he can keep kiting and picking off units a little bit by a little bit, he'll be alright. But there we go. T3 air is up. That is a spy plane. And if Whitehall sees that, is it going to prompt a shift to T3 or why he's already started it? 60% of the way towards T3 air, and he needs it. Absolutely needs it. Right. P gen is almost done and that will be all his power issues quite happy. This is a large, large force sitting on Adrix's doorstep. He does have a bunch of defending units, but these guys push in. They have the potential to do a decent amount of damage. Bricks at the front doing the tanking, the reduces following up behind to do extra damage. Uh, sniper bots go down. Shield gen has popped, but that is actually honestly a lot. In come the T1 bombers, and what are they after? They are after the HQ. They were definitely after the HQ, but uh, Flak saves the day. Needed a few more. And now there's ASFs. Of course, ASF or no, it's a terrible idea to slide into a swarm of T1 inceptors, because you will die. And just have a look at that. Ah, ASF of his own as well, so Whitehall is also in the T3 air race. See, a swarm of Corsairs as well. If they came in now, they could maybe pick off that land factory. Hasn't been repaired, it is not shielded. In fact, even that's not shielded. Wide open, exposed P-Gen. Has Whitehall scouted any of that? Well, he has. Hmm. But at the moment, he has ground concerns. That push cost him a huge amount of his army. If you have a look, have a look at what was left behind. 21,000 reclaim. Just, just to be scooped up. That's a lot of reclaim to give a high level opponent. And he's going to use that for something. We can be absolutely certain. Which is what? We don't know yet. Okay, engineers milling around here and doing some more bricks. Bricks are good, bricks are powerful. But reclaim into the coffers. Ah, what's that done for his mass bar? Well, he's now floating mass, so he's definitely using it on something. Some PD, getting some more units out, getting some more defenses. It looks pretty solid to me. White Horse, on the other hand, is absolutely stalled out, but he is still spending more than what Adrix is, just based on the reclaim and numbers. Okay, units pushing out to the right for Adrix. Large T3 force here. Maybe just wanting to hold that perimeter, looking for any more potential raids, but there are none at this stage. Right, all those factories have been control cade and they're being reclaimed. So, uh, he wants the mass, and what does he want? Or. I'm certain he's upgrading anything. Oh, there's a T2 Max here that could go to T3 perhaps. Definitely needs it though. Alright, down the bottom, it is a single Rhino. Majority taking out the radar. And Adrox still here with his comm. He is well entrenched. Got a bunch of T2 PD with him. Got a few SAM, so air won't be an issue. But if he was pushed by this for example if they manage to get around and run on up throw in the Corsairs at the same time take down the shield generators he could be in a bit of trouble but speaking of bits of trouble we have trouble on the right hand side a few Othams with a couple of Rashivas flanking them to protect from here and they can wander their way straight up here and probably take out this little expansion there is a T1 PD in the region of course but uh, that's not going to really stop three Othams. Have fun. A monkey. There we go. I was wondering when we're going to start seeing some experimentals and a monkey is on the way for Whitehorse. Getting a 
plenty of build power onto that. That is going to go up nicely. And. Ah. A chicken. So, a chicken going out for Adrox, and I imagine he's using. I'm sorry, he has used all of this reclaim to do it. He's got anything left in the bank. He's got a fair bit left in the bank, and. His actual eco income is now 259 compared to Whitehorse who is up to 340 so Whitehorse staying ahead certainly keeping his eco game on the run but that is going up scary fast to what 30% done on 20,000 health compare that to the monkey which is 10% done I think he's going to want to focus on that a wee bit more at this stage. He's got plenty of air. Well, did have. There's still a handful of Corsairs which can help do some damage to the chicken. But the chicken is going up incredibly quick. Very bad time. Monkey, when a 1v1, if a 1v1 is chicken. Chicken will see it, chicken will shoot it, chicken will win. More health, more DPS. Monkey does a lot of damage, yes, but uh, chicken is well in front and shields are blinking. So, what has happened to Adrox's power? Well, the answer is. Pause. Probably because of this right here. If he stops production out of that and instead focuses on the T3 Pigeon, he might get that sorted. Although, I think his focus is trying to get that Yothota done. I wonder if he's aware of the monkey. Well, if he's watching the scout, he will be aware of it in a second as it flies over and he goes, Oh, Kissy. Monkey has been seen and the Corsairs do come out to the right. They scrap the flak and now they're free to just kill. Come on, PD, gonna do what it do what it can. Uh, this gets some damage out, but the walls collapse and the C1PD collapses shortly after. But the Corsairs take out the siege tanks, and I don't know if that was worth it. A bunch of reclaim there that can now be used, and Monkey, Monkey has okay, priority has been changed. Monkey is now at 83%, almost done. We have Chicken is at 81%. So it looks like a lot of build power has changed on to the Monkey. Wanting to get that completed as soon as possible because, well, frankly, definitely gonna need it when the chicken starts stomping around. Going on over here, a couple of zoos just going for a bit of a wander, gonna try and kill things on their way past. If they can get up into here, they could kill off a T2 mix as well. Free of charge if it's on radar. Oh, the answer is yes, it's on radar, but here come the Corsairs, and uh, I feel like that's a wee bit of overkill. Just a wee bit, I mean, it's only a couple of zoos. oh my god. So, both guys have finished the experimentals around about the same time. Uh, Chicken is already on the walk towards the front, I would say. Probably joining up these forces, they're going to have a go at each other at long range, with sniper bots being the winning moment of the day. Comparative size, much smaller though, much fewer. 37 ASF, 110 Inties, extra 60 out of fuel, and 17 Corsairs. 39 Inties and 29 ASF, so Adjok is well behind on the air game. And I mean well behind, like at any point Whitehorse could just start to send his out and clear the skies, and you could then do what he wants if it wasn't for all this flak. So Adrox is well aware of the air issue and has flak a plenty. Looks like he's getting some extra factories up though. There's power, there's power. Maybe one, two, three uh, air factories on production. Trying to get a bit of back in the way. Okay. Three Sams. Yep, spiders on the way. This force is too much for the spider to take on by itself. It will die a horrible death, but Having said that, it's also very dangerous for a chicken to try and push all of that. That's a lot of bricks. I mean, a lot of bricks. 40. 40 bricks. They will mince all sorts of stuff. Compare that to 24 Othams. There's a handful of sniper bots in there as well. Of course, they can like, take things out of range, but... Facing off against 40 bricks. 
That's I'd say that's actually probably fairly even fight. 40 bricks plus a monkey. 24 Othams chicken. Yeah, I think it'd be pretty pretty close. So you're throwing those T3 shield gens and actually I always wondered how much health they actually produce. Uh ten thousand. Really? Indeed, extra ten thousand health on those shields that massive. I actually had no idea those things were that strong. Like I mean Dear God. Is that excessive? That's just me not knowing how strong shields are, because my word. Okay, got these guys have decided we can hover, or we're amphibious, and they're going to push up this way. They're going to try and come through and maybe do a flanking on the edge over here. I'm going to get the units up and start killing off. Well, we do have one, two, three T3 mass extractors. Lose those and it'll be a bad time. Strats are out to say good day, and straits are a great answer for flak. Look at that. But they have just drifted too far forwards and Adrux with a quick little response from his air wiped them off the face of the planet. Monkey is caught up to these guys though, they're not going to last too much longer. Corsairs are roped in as well to assist with killing that off and uh, it's going to be a hold there but with the monkey up here, oh yeah, no, chicken's alright. I thought maybe it would push up behind and look at potentially trying to pick it off but it needs to be defensive over this way because that those bricks are on their way. Trying to do basically the same thing, he's like oh I can do that too. Uh, so what happened up here that was a successful raid by Adrox, these guys did get in and kill off three T3 mass extractors. Can they do the same over here? Well the answer is going to be no, for one because that's all fully shielded and two because the chickens are already in place with supporting units so those bricks got a fall back and they want to kind of run away oh dear oh me I saw that that was eight bricks just dying from that face cannon a giant cannon on the face of this thing just mutilated those bricks into nothingness have a look at that Massive loss because they were all clumped together. He'd shift G them. There we go, that's another four. Five. That chicken is getting. Well, he wants to be careful though. Those bricks could turn on at any moment. And that's exactly what they do. Decides to turn around and run away because it kind of wants to. Is there any air that can assist? Well, not anymore. Right, in the middle. More bricks pushing over. They have taken out these mass extractors because why not? Killing off Eco is good, and they are now just squirming around a little bit. And if they can pick off these engines, it'd be um, moderately annoying, not too much of an issue. There's plenty of sniper boss though, and they are making a wreck out of these forces. Chicken doing chicken things. Lots of reinforcing bricks coming in though. Not going to be great. Monkey is on the right hand side, very full on health. It's going to rank of The regen is good, and it is going to be killing off. Sam's actually. Ben's going to be able to move on over and murder other things, uh, except for the intercepting forces like that. And that's a lot of sniper boss. They can do a ton of damage. Have a look, they're single fire, 580 damage. You get 10 of those, that's 5000 damage. Well, these you can have a very, very injured spider, especially sitting behind some shields. Shields are up, and there are some defending offers to help as well. So that monkey, going to be a close thing actually, and I'm going to actually point it out, probably these guys, because there we go. With well, a scout flying over, the monkey's revealed, and the sniper boss get a chance to shoot, and just take a look at the chunks of health falling off that thing. Don't want to run into that. What happens to the Athota? No, it's still alive. 40,000 health, three ranks of energy. It has killed a lot of bricks. 37 bricks, that has been well worth its weight. This still remains. 
Has it been rebuilt? I don't know. It's always of low priority at this stage. Not what they're considering and... Yeah, okay. It's safe up. Not really. He's in the water, but he's not really in the water. It's not deep enough. So he's still get shot by ground units. A bug? Does have air control. A bug isn't a bad option with air control, which is exactly what he's got. Adrix has built another experimental one. That is a, another chicken, and that's actually a nuke. So uh, that is halfway done, and does White Horse have any? He scouted it. He has scouted it. He knows it was built. Did he do any SMD? No, he hasn't. So I think he's going to rely on trying to win before the nuke is loaded. And the bug might be the ticket. He definitely has more air. Absolutely. Definitely controls the air game. And if he can get that bug into a few sensitive locations, he could do some real good damage with it. There's not a lot of anti-air on the ground in the base. It seems to be the majority of Adrox's anti-air is mobile. He has a few SAMs dotted around the place, but... Oh, that poor engineer. Is this overkill? Is it in a range just picking things off, wanting to kill some of the anti air, unsurprisingly? Get some of those things out the air, it's going to be a good time. How's the bug? The bug is done. The bug is ready to go. How's the nuke? Well, the nuke is three quarters loaded, the nuke is ready to go. And the bug's been spotted, because that's a lot of SAMs going up. So Adric has seen the bug, and he does not want to get caught out by it. So he's building SAMs as you would. No, he doesn't have the air power. It's getting there, getting there with the extra factories. But uh, SAMs right now are going to be his absolute best friend. Right, Bricks saying hello to the ground. But then, uh... Comes Tall Boy. Turns around to run away. I suppose if we can lure the Bricks into the water, the Bricks won't be able to shoot back. And that will take extra damage from that, but the... There we go, the bug comes over here, opens up. The air wing from Adjux comes in. Is it going to be a one pass kill? No, it survives for the moment. There's more. Ah, oh dear. That was, uh, I know what he was doing. He was bringing it in to try and take care of the Athotas, do some damage on those guys, but it just gets wiped out of the sky. It was a suicide air wing, but it got the bug. And now there's huge amounts of flak coming over. So White Horse has lost his air capability and there goes the nuke. Uh, I don't believe we saw any kind of SMD up here. I still don't. That's TMD. Attack defense ain't going to do nothing for a nuke. And I don't see anything else that can help. What a lovely base you have. Shame if something happened to it. Yeah. Everything happened to that. And that was all of his production. Got a T3 factory a few T3 factories, but they're all support factories, so they're not going to be able to keep producing units. He does have plenty of power. His eco isn't bad. His income is great, but you see here, instantly his problem. No build power. No factories. No units. Now, Monkey Up This Way has wandered into range of, well, a bad situation. It's, oh, they look pretty damaged. I'm guessing these sniper bots have been tickling it down all the time. 
and honestly there's not a lot left. Got a few bricks down here which are going to die to these chickens who've got 79 and 50 kills respectively. They have done incredible work defensively keeping those bricks at bay. Then we have a raiding force coming up the left. What is there? Well, there was a factory slapped down straight away and upgrading straight away but it's going to take time to get in position, it's going to take time to produce units, and time is something that White Horse simply does not have. His eco is fine, his eco is fine, but the problem is his ground forces, as of this exact moment, are basically non existent. I can't actually see a single ground combat force, ground offensive unit, anywhere. Wind defense. A few ASF loitering around, yes, but uh, they can't shoot things on the ground. And in the meantime, this is Adrox just pushing up. Got two chickens. He's got tons of flag. He's got a horde of Othams, a complete and utter overrun of sniper bots, and. It's just ain't great. So between the chickens down here, killing off so many bricks between them. Honestly. They have done fantastic work. Uh, a misuse of the bug. I feel like that was unfortunate that he needed to keep his air in front of the bug. Because it just got sniped out by the air wing. Yes, it was the air wing that was thrown away by Adrox, but it was enough to kill the bug and that's what he needed. In the nuke. And the nuke couldn't, I don't know if it could have been better placed. It could off all the build power, all the factories, all of basically everything. Now all that's left. It's a wee solo commander. Adrox know he's there? No he doesn't. Possibly just guessing. Trying to find the comm. Guys, I hope they'll come over and he starts firing. Now he knows. And Othams actually go into amphibious torpedo mode. They get a couple of shots as they come in from land, but now it's just torpedoes all day. And this is just the gradual tickle down, except for the chickens. There we go, folks. That. Was a good display from Adrox. He was on the ropes for much of that game. He had less eco, he had less income, he had fewer units, uh, he had a little bit of tech which helped but he just held. He didn't try to push and claim more territory, he held, he built up, he got plenty of defenses in play.